Suppose we know the tangent of alpha and the tangent of beta. In this case, the tangent of alpha is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, and the tangent of beta is equal to 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2. Can we calculate the tangent of alpha plus beta? Well, the tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to the sine of alpha plus beta over the cosine of alpha plus beta. And the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. And the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. So, if we know the sines and the cosines of alpha and beta, we can calculate the tangent of alpha plus beta. But is it necessary to know the sines and cosines of alpha and beta to calculate the tangent of alpha plus beta? This part is a bit tricky. If we know the tangent of alpha, can we calculate the sine and the cosine of alpha? Well, 180 degrees plus alpha has the same tangent as alpha, but the sines and the cosines are different. So, which one is it? Alpha or 180 degrees plus alpha? Or maybe it's some other angle that has the same tangent. Well, it turns out that it doesn't matter, because we can use the following. Since the tangent of alpha is equal to the sine of alpha over the cosine of alpha, we can say that the sine of alpha is equal to the tangent of alpha times the cosine of alpha. And that will also be true for angle beta, which means that the sine of beta is equal to the tangent of beta times the cosine of beta. And now, if in this expression, instead of the sine of alpha and the sine of beta, we write them as the tangent times the cosine, we get the following. And now, the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta cancel out with this cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta. So we get that this is equal to the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta over 1 minus the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta. But we have to keep in mind that for this to be defined, both the tangent of alpha and the tangent of beta have to be defined as well as 1 minus the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta cannot be equal to 0. But why is it so important to check that everything is defined? Well, we can have the situation where something isn't defined over here, but the tangent of alpha plus beta is defined. For instance, if both alpha and beta are equal to 90 degrees, then neither the tangent of alpha nor the tangent of beta are defined, but the tangent of alpha plus beta is defined and in that case will be equal to zero. If we go back to our initial problem and we substitute this for the tangent of alpha and the tangent of beta, we get that the tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to the square root of 2 over 2 plus 
3 minus 2 times the square root of 2 over 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2 times 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2. And I'll speed up this calculation. So this is now equal to 6 minus 3 times the square root of 2 over 6 minus 3 times the square root of 2, and that is equal to 1. We started with a problem where we were given the tangent of alpha and the tangent of beta, and we needed to find the tangent of alpha plus beta. Then we saw that we can express the tangent of alpha plus beta if we know sines and cosines of alpha and beta. However, since we didn't know them, we express the sine as the tangent times the cosine. And putting that in our expression, the cosines cancelled out, so we were left with the formula for the tangent of alpha plus beta in terms of the tangent of alpha and the tangent of beta. Finally, we use that formula to solve our initial problem. With that in mind, I leave you with this question. What is the formula for the cotangent of alpha plus beta in terms of the cotangent of alpha and the cotangent of beta? That is all for this video. If you liked it, click the like button, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you next time.